Ron. Movies with Ron. Hell yeah, motherfucker. Movies with Ron. Hey everybody, welcome to the show. The one where every week Ron recaps a movie for me and Rick because we like his versions better. I'm Chris, your MC for the time being. Our sound engineer is Rick. How's it going? And the man himself, Ron. Hey, everybody. How's it going? Hey, Ron. How's everybody feeling tonight? (laughs) Do you guys know I made a tweet and it was liked by a podcast called The Jurassic Park Podcast? Yeah? Yeah. All right. I was like, how would you make a fucking show out of that? How would you do it every week? Yeah, seriously. This guy does it every week, and he's got about 90 episodes. Oh, my God. (laughs) And at the beginning, it's got a little clip from Jurassic World where she's like, everyone remain calm. But then it's the perfect for an opener. Right after that, it's Jeff Goldblum from The Lost World going, ah, this is how it starts. (laughs) But then there's running and screaming. Oh, yeah. (laughs) And then when he does his show openers, it's always the music from the first Jurassic Park movie Mm -hmm. where they're going, taking the tour and stuff. And it's like, hey, everybody, welcome to the show. Yeah. Uh, (laughs) That is cool. (laughs) Yeah. So it made me think, like, is that the only Jurassic Park podcast? And it is not. Oh, wow. (laughs) There's one called the Jurassic Park Minute. Uh Uh-huh. There's only like two episodes. I think he gave up. Uh-huh. And then there is Le Podcast de Jurassic Park, <laughs> which is a French thing. It's got a cool logo, though. Oh, here's, here's one. Their description is, two idiots watch a movie and talk about whether or not it's better than Jurassic Park, the greatest film of all time. <laughs> and it's called, Is It Better Than Jurassic Park? Wow. <laughs> I try and listen to their episodes, and it says, unavailable. Oh. But yeah, I was I was thinking like, man, if anyone else could make a Jurassic Park podcast, I think it could be us. Yeah, damn it. Why didn't we have that idea? I got another podcast that I listen to. Oh, yeah? Yeah, it's called the Coming to Get You podcast. All oh, right? yeah. Yeah, it's good, man. Uh, I let you hear a little bit of it. Remember? Uh-huh. And it is uh, Kelly and Richie Crypt, and they uh, they're a couple over in... Uh, is that their real last name? I'm not sure what her last name is. She's just introduced as Kelly. Anyway, they're over in uh, England, Mm -hmm. okay, and their podcast is all about horror movies. And they just sit there, they they talk shit to each other, they talk about these movies, whether they're good or bad, and uh, it's awesome. They have a great time. Uh, I have a great time listening to them. You know, uh, they actually remind me a lot of us having a good time, Yeah. you know? So, uh, anyway, I love it. Uh, Their latest episode was... uh, I think the Toxic Avenger. Yeah, I listened to that one. Yeah, man. That got me thinking about that old movie. Uh, you know, when I first saw that movie, I was probably... I wanted to talk about this. Eight or nine years old. <laughs> they they talk about that in that episode yeah. where where the, the first time they ever saw it. And I remember, I wanted to know if you remembered uh-huh. the first time we saw it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it wasn't even our idea. Where were we? We were at Pick and Save. Uh, we were actually in Eckert. It was Eckert. a pharmacy, little pharmacy oh. drugstore. Okay, and they had a a rack of VHS tapes for like five bucks each. And I just looked at that. And I saw that. Oh, the Toxic Avenger. I've got a bunker of material on Pick and Save. I got nothing on Eckert though. Oh, sorry, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> but Mom was like, "Hey guys, yeah, look at this movie." I know. <laughs> and it is the front cover of a movie that a kid would want to Absolutely. see. Absolutely. And oh we go and we, we were we were watching that movie by ourselves, and it was like, titch, uh, death, <laughs> all this awesome shit. The part where the kid gets run over on the bike, I know, and the guys like go back and run him over again, <laughs> yeah. And it's like trauma. I remember I was like eight years old. Uh huh. I, I think I was younger than eight, and I was like, I gotta go get mom. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> 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 I Did think that you? was the film. I think that fucked me up. Oh man. I think that was the 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 time, the point. <laughs> the point of no return. In your life. <laughs> Fucking Lloyd Kaufman. That's awesome. So anyway, everybody, uh if you like horror movies, check out the Coming to Get You podcast. 
Uh, it's uh, it's on iTunes. It's on Stitcher. I think they got a website. Coming to get you podcast.com. Anyway, also, Richie Cripp just had his birthday. So, uh, happy birthday, Richie. Happy birthday, Richie. All right, you know what I saw the other night? No. It's a movie called The Lobster. Oh, yeah? Yeah. It's got uh, a guy I've been liking recently, Colin Farrell. I used to hate him. I used to hate him. <laughs> but now I love him. <laughs> He's buried right in my backyard. <laughs> He gained like 50 pounds for this role. Oh, yeah? Yeah. So what's the deal? So he's like still kind of fit. <laughs> he still looks good. <laughs> okay. But he thinks he's like pulling a De Niro. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but he his wife leaves him. Uh, this is like somewhere in the future. There's no flying cars, but society has found out that if you are a couple, if everyone is a couple, whether you're gay or straight or whatever, uh -huh. the world works a lot better. So if you're single, if something happens and you're single and it happens to him, his wife leaves him, yeah. you get sent to a, this this uh, campus yeah, yeah, where you have to find a mate and you have about 30 days to find one. Or, and if you don't find one, yeah. you have to choose an animal that you will be turned into at the end. Oh, my God. And he chooses a lobster. So when did this movie come out? It like just came out on video. Okay. It was pretty good. Like, you can tell the writer, director, it's like made by a, a one guy savant. And uh, yeah. you could tell he was like sheltered as a child. Uh -huh. Just like the way he writes dialogue and stuff. It's pretty like, it's its own universe. Okay. But um, it still works because it, it's still like, it stays true to itself. But um, yeah, go see The Lobster, everybody. It's got John C. Riley in it. Yeah? Yeah. I like him. Yeah, he's good. And, uh, oh, I, I thought of another part. Okay. <laughs> as they're looking for dates, uh -huh. as they're looking for a mate, uh, one of the bonding activities, they go out because uh, all single people, they don't go to this campus, not all of them. Uh -huh. the, the Some of them have formed a group that are against uh, find being a couple, and they're they're single for life. And they live in the woods. Yeah, yeah, and they're they're uh, they're the rebels, uh -huh. right? And so one of the bonding activities is like every evening, these people in the campus, uh, they have dart guns and they go out and hunt them. And however many of the rebels you capture, you add a day to your stay oh. and increasing your chances in finding a mate. All right. Yeah. Good movie. All right. Cool. Yeah. Sounds and good. Sounds, I haven't spoiled weird. it for you. There's so much more to the movie, okay. and it's worth seeing. All right. It's called The Lobster. All right, Ron, what'd you go see? Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children. Oh, my fucking God. Yes. It was wonderful. <laughs> Tim Burton. All right. What do you think about Tim Burton? I think he agreed... All those years back, he agreed to do a Planet of the Apes movie, uh -huh. and then he was assassinated and replaced with a reptile yeah, person. I think so, too. And that reptile person is trying his damnedest to be Tim Burton. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what, me being a member of that prestige club sure paid off tonight. Oh, yeah? Yeah. There was a big-ass line. I walked right through it. Oh, and nice. And there was a lot of audible... What the fuck? <laughs> a whole lot of teenagers were in the theater tonight, and they were pissed. Good. Oh, yeah. They were pissed. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, come on, babe, we gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> so, this being not quite a horror movie, more like a little fantasy dealy, we got some uh, fantasy previews. I'm not really going to talk about any of them. Maybe one. Uh, one was La La Land. Another was A Dog's Purpose. There was The Smurfs. There was this Harry Potter shit, uh, Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. Mm. Know anything about that? That's Colin Farrell. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Looks okay. Looks like a Harry Potter shit. Is he the main guy in that? No. He's like the wizard captain. <laughs> I don't so fucking wizard. know, man. Yeah. yeah, he's like some kind of magic guy, <laughs> okay. I think. Right. I don't fucking know. <laughs> okay, but there was this one uh, preview called Hidden Figures. And it's about uh, 
these three black ladies that are like uh, super math geniuses uh, back in the first days of NASA, okay? And they were hired by NASA to come and be engineers for the space program. And uh, it's about all the hardships that they're going through in that, you know, not only being black, but also being women. Mm -hmm. And uh, man, that looks like a good ass movie. It's got a whole shit ton of good stars in it. Yeah, so it's yeah. like a drama? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it looks good. It didn't really fit with all the rest of these bullshit previews. <laughs> like I was like, hey man, that looks pretty good. <laughs> you a little drink of my fireball here, ladies and gentlemen. All right. Have we heard from them yet? We have not. <laughs> oh, has John Tesh called? His agent says he's busy. All right. I guess we got to go find him. Yeah. yeah. His agent said that he would be on the show if we wanted him. All right. <laughs> His name's Ralph. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Are you ready? Yep. Miss Peregrine's Home for uh, Fucked Up Children on Movies with Ron. Peculiar Children. Peculiar Children. All right. So the movie just uh, immediately starts up with a whole bunch of old-timey photos of uh, weird-looking kids. Uh -huh. Okay. And then also grown-ups with, like, white eyes and shit. And uh, goes right into the title card, Miss Peregrine's Home for uh, Peculiar Children. And uh, it's old uh, Tim Burton font, uh, you know, credits. Oh, yeah? Yeah, like, where it's really long letters and everything. Yeah. Kind of made me think about Beetlejuice, I guess. Or, uh, yeah, whatever. Any of his other movies? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, you know that actor, uh, I don't know how to pronounce his name, Aza Butterfield? Aza? Aza? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> he's the star of the movie he plays jake you hear his uh his voiceover and he's like do you ever feel like nothing you do matters and i was like oh <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> you had me at hello <laughs> every teen in the world is gonna love this movie uh, and then he starts talking about his life and uh you know he's a uh, Typical teen angst, okay, and he works at some drugstore, and he's getting a ride home from, uh, yeah, he's at a drugstore, and there's this hot chick who's talking to him, and then uh, he's stacking adult diapers, she, uh, you know, she smiles at him, he gets a little uh, sheepish and embarrassed, and she turns around to her, uh, her fuck meat boyfriend, and she's like, hey, don't forget your diapers. She takes the diapers out of, fucking, out of his hands, throws them at, his, at her boyfriend, and then he throws them back and knocks down his entire display. <laughs> then they all just run. So he's like, fuck my life. <laughs> so then he gets a ride home. And the actress that he gets a ride home from is the super religious bitch from Edward Scissorhands. Oh, yeah? He, uh, he goes and he calls his uh, grandfather, who is uh, played by Terrence Stamp. And he's all fucking crazy and shit. And he's like, yeah, you know, they're coming. They're coming to get me. And he's like, who the hell's coming to get you? What are you talking about, man? You know, no, 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 no. Just just stay where you are. It's fine. I'll come and check on you. So then she drives him to uh, to his grandfather's neighborhood. And it's all foggy and scary looking and shit. And then uh, all of a sudden, right in front of the car appears uh, Samuel L. Jackson with glowing white eyes for just a second. <laughs> and then she, she swerves out of the way. And she's like, man, that guy was creepy, <laughs> right? Then he goes and he checks the house, and the house has been broken into, and uh, everything is thrown around. It's all fucked up. He goes out and he sees the back door, and there's this giant hole in it, okay? So something forced its way in. Then he looks across the yard and at the fence, and there's a giant fucking hole in that. Something huge went through it, and then it leads off into the woods. So he follows the trail and finds his grandpa, who is laying there dead with no eyes. Jesus. Yeah. Now, his eyes are not, like, all, like, clawed out and bloody. He's just, like... Regular old man with empty eye holes. <laughs> okay. No blood. And then his grandfather wakes up and he's grabbing his hand and he's like, you got to go to the island, man. You got to go. You got to go see this shit. Go talk to Miss Peregrine and fucking, uh, you know, uh, that's it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know you think I'm crazy, but I should have told you all this shit years ago, man. And then he's like, I'm dead. All right. <laughs> So now the kid has no idea what he was talking about. So then uh, Shelly shows up. She's like, hey, what's going on? And fucking Jake turns around and then sees behind Shelly is this giant fucking monster. Okay. <clears throat> it looks like a human with unbelievably long arms and legs. No eyes. 
and an incredibly elongated face. So it's uh, Slender Man. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. That piece of shit. It shows up in fucking everything. What the hell? So he's like, Shelly, behind you. She turns around. She starts shooting. Because she, had, she brought her gun. <laughs> She's like, I got a gun. You know? And uh, she shoots. Nothing doesn't hit anything. And then he looks again. And there's nothing there. So then it cuts to him a few months later with his shrink. And he's like uh, talking about how his grandpa used to be an explorer. And uh, how he used to fight monsters and stuff like that. And she's like, yeah, that's... Uh, that's that's cute that you believed all that stuff, all those stories of his. And he's like, yeah, he always told me those stories as a kid. So now we get a flashback within, like a flashback, I guess. You know, He's sitting there telling a story to a shrink. And then in that story, he's a child being told another story by his grandpa. What the fuck's going on here? Yeah, man, it's fucking bullshit. Anyway, his grandpa's like telling baby Jake about, uh, yeah, when I was a kid. Uh, you know, I went to a special school for, for special kids, you know, and, uh, she's, he's like, show me the pictures, grandpa, show me the pictures. He shows him pictures. And like in these old timey photos, there's like a kid with bees living inside of his body. And there's like two kids that are like super strong. And then there's a girl that can fly and shit like that. And he's like, wow, well, grandpa, like, uh, what was special about you that you got to go to this fucking school? He's like, well, you know. There were monsters in uh, in Poland where where we where we came from, uh, so you know we, I was special. I just I got to go to this school just because of that, and so it's like oh okay, the whole thing's gonna be like a an allegory for Nazis and shit, right? Uh-huh. So then we cut to uh, Jake's dad bringing him home, and uh, they're having a surprise birthday party for Jake, and then somebody is like, here here's your uh, present from your grandpa who is now dead. Sorry. And, uh, you know, so I thought you might want to open this one. He opens it up, and it's a Ralph Emerson book. Uh, and there's a postcard inside of it with this island on it. And it's the postcard is to his grandfather from Miss Peregrine. And she's like, yeah, you know, it's been a couple of years since I heard from you, so come see me or whatever. And then he's talking to a shrink with his parents, and he's like, yeah, I need to go to this island. And the mom's like, no fucking way, I'm not paying for this. You know, and the dad is like, uh, he calls himself a writer, and he's writing a book about birds, mm-hmm. okay? He's like a fucking bird watcher. And the kid is like, well, Dad can go and, and look at birds, you know, for his book. And then uh, the dad is like, yeah. <laughs> you tell he just like doesn't want to work or whatever. And uh, the therapist is like, I think this might be good. It might be a good idea, you know, and, and it'll help him be able to say goodbye to his grandpa. So Jake is going to the island with his dad. The island is somewhere, you know, uh, somewhere in Wales. So they get to the hotel, and there's all these weird little hoodies watching them and shit like that. And uh, there's this old weird guy in a wheelchair wearing glasses, like he's uh, dark glasses, like he's blind. Shows up a little later. And Jake is like, okay, well, I want to go to the school. And his dad is like, well, I want to go to the beach and look at the birds. You know, why don't we do the school tomorrow? And he's like, well, why don't I just go by myself? (laughs) <laughs> you just go to the beach, Dad. You know, who cares? And he's like, well, your mom wouldn't like that, but uh, I kind of want to do that. <laughs> so then he's like, well, how about those kids over there? And he goes over to the kids and he's like, hey, 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 dudes. Uh, can one of you guys take my kid to the other side of the island? And he like holds up some money. So then they're like, yeah, sure. And they take him and uh, they lead him into like a big muddy fucking hole that he steps in and shit. So they're like fucking with him. Mm-hmm. And then he's like, oh, man, is this even the way to the school? And they're like, yeah, it's right on the other side of those trees. So he goes on and he sees it and it's totally burned down. And and it's there's nothing there. And he's like, oh, shit. So he goes back and he tells his dad. And his dad is like, yeah, well, you know, that's the whole thing about your grandpa. He's He was full of lies and shit. So, you know, fuck it. And it turned out that uh, it had been bombed, you know, during the war. Uh, and it was bombed like three months after his grandpa left it. So he's like, you know, if you left your school and then everybody you knew three months later is dead, you might not want to relive that memory. So you might want to, you you might make up shit about, you know, being a monster hunter and shit. So the next day, Jake lies to his dad and he's like, yeah, you know, those two kids, uh, they want to hang out with me. So I'm going to go hang out with them if that's okay. And his dad is all happy. He's like, oh, you're fucking fucking acting normal now. Cool. (laughs) Yeah, of course. Go, man. Go. 
So he just goes and he starts exploring the ruins. He's looking around at all this weird shit. There's like a clock there that stopped when the when the bomb hit and everything. And uh, he's looking at photos and weird jars with weird like biological specimens in it and shit. And then he sees this uh, this little blonde girl down the hallway. And he's like, what the fuck? And then he starts seeing other kids like running around. And he gets freaked out and he runs. Because he figures he's seeing ghosts. So he runs and he trips and he falls right onto his fucking face on some rock. <laughs> so then he's out. All right, so he wakes up. And uh, that blonde girl is like, Abe? Abe? And he's like, uh, no, I'm Jake. And she's like, oh, well, you look like Abe. You know, Abe is his grandfather. Mm-hmm. And Jake's like, uh, you are all dead. Okay, so what the hell's going on here? And they're like, we're not dead. We're not dead. Come on, man. We got to, uh, you know, Miss Peregrine. Uh, she saw you on the boat ferry coming over here. Uh, so, you know, she sent us to come and get you. Come on, let's go. We got to get back into the loop. And he's like, what the fuck are you talking about? Now, while he was on the ferry, they saw a bird. And he was like, oh, it's a peregrine falcon, his dad, who's a bird guy. Uh-huh. And he's like, oh, peregrine, like Miss Peregrine. And he's like, yeah, that's probably where your grandpa got the idea for the name, you know, in the lie that he told. So he follows them. And uh, they all walk into this cave. And then there's a weird little shift of reality. You know, the, the camera just, this is accomplished by the camera just turning around Jake. All right. And then he's like, fuck this. And he runs out of the cave and he's in the uh, fucking 1943. <laughs> okay. Back when the bomb hit. Yeah. And so he's talking to him and uh, he ends up running away from him and he goes back to the, uh, the fucking hotel, which is now just a pub. You know, it's not a hotel. And they're like, who the fuck are you? Get the fuck out of here. And he's like, no, I have a room key. It's cool. He's like, I'm the fucking manager. Fuck you. Get out. And then somebody's like, he's American. He's a spy. <laughs> And uh, he's got to run, and the kids end up coming in and helping him. And every kid has a power. And one of the girls, everything she touches, turn, uh, sets on fire. <laughs> so she sets the fucking bar on fire. And uh, then there's an invisible kid, and he's running around throwing people's drinks around and shit. So they create that diversion, and he runs away. So now they go back to the school, which is now fine. And he meets Miss Peregrine, who is played by Eva Green. Not her best performance... <laughs> but she looks weird. Yeah. So, you know, it's cool. Uh, and, she, you know, I love her from everything else she's done, so she yeah. gets a pass. It's all good. So despite being stuck in this loop that she has created, which is her power, uh, she can take one day and make it last over and over and over. And mm-hmm. that's how the kids are still alive. Oh. Okay? And that's called... And, you know, you can only do it in one certain little area. Like, she's done it at the school, and she has... Because the school got bombed, she had to reset that day, okay? So at the end of every day, she has to go back and reset it just before the fucking bomb hits. It's actually That was pretty pretty cool. So are all the kids aware of this? Yes, and they, so they don't age, Uh, all right? So they're all still the same age that his grandfather was when he was a little boy. But they don't forget every day? Correct. Okay. And they are all aware that they have, like, daily chores. Like the one girl, Emma... Every day she has to go and catch a baby squirrel that falls out of a tree <laughs> and then go put it back. Yeah. It's weird. So uh, despite being stuck in 1943, Miss Peregrine knows all about Jake's grandfather being dead because she can still communicate with the outside world, you know, because she's like the leader of the school, whatever. She's the Professor X, okay? Mm-hmm. And uh, she is aware that time is moving on outside of the loop. But in order to keep the kids alive, she has to keep that loop going. So they call all of these uh, mutant kids, they call them peculiars, okay? And, uh, you know, your mutant power is called your peculiarity. Mm. So nobody gets old. They live the same day over and over. Uh, And Miss Peregrine gives him a tour. So he goes and he meets all the kids. There's a strong kid. uh, There's the fire girl. There's the flying girl, Emma. There's the invisible boy. So uh, he's talking with Emma because she's like, Super blonde in a light blue dress and just reminds you of that little girl from, or that little princess from Frozen, which I'm sure was done on purpose, you know, trying to cash in on that shit. Uh-huh. Uh, so he's like in love with her and he's, he's following her around like a puppy and she, uh, she does that shit with a baby squirrel and her power is she can fly, she can control air and she has to wear lead shoes so she doesn't float away. So then he meets Enoch. Who, uh, who is, he's got this weird power. He's like a little uh, Dr. Frankenstein. And he can, like, take organs from other, like, dead animals and put them into inanimate objects. 
and then bring them to life. Oh, wow. It's weird. And then those objects can do whatever he wants them to do. Like he creates a couple of weird little mutant dolls with like crab claws and shit on his desk. And then he makes them fight to the death. It's pretty cool. So then he's joining them for dinner. There's also another little girl who can uh, make things grow. So she grows like one giant carrot for dinner that they all fucking eat. It's fucking weird. <laughs> it's like sliced up in different size slices. It, it, like it, it, it looks like a fucking layered cake. <laughs> it's fucking strange. Okay, they're all eating like a big old slice of carrot for fucking dinner. And, uh, you know, the invisible kid is naked, so uh, fucking Jake almost sits on him. Crap like that happens, okay? Yeah. And uh, this kid, Enoch, he's got a big chip on his shoulder, you know, because uh, he's a little possessive over the girls. He can tell Jake wants to go fuck Emma, so he's pissed off. And then uh, the phone rings. And Miss Peregrine has to go and answer it. She does this every night because when this phone rings on this day, it is his grandfather, Abe, and he's calling like from the army, uh, you know, the 1943 Abe. And he's like calling to make sure everything's OK. And Jake does not know this yet, but this comes into play later. So then she's like, OK, well, it's movie night. It's movie time. We do this every night. So let's go look at it. And they talk to this kid named Horace. And uh, his power is to be able to project his dreams out of his eyes. And that's what they do for movie night. <laughs> and he usually just dreams about clothes and shit. But then he, uh, you know, you can see little like prophetic visions he's had and stuff like that. Like, oh, there might be trouble coming. And then he sees uh, Emma and Jake and like they kiss. <laughs> so then the real Emma and Jake get all sheepish and embarrassed. And then Miss Peregrine is like, okay, enough of this shit. And they're like, oh, wait till you see the loop reset. It is spectacular. So then they all go out into the backyard. They all have to put on all these old-timey gas masks. <laughs> and then, uh, fuck it, yeah, man, there is bombers flying overhead and shit. It's really cool looking. And then one of them flies over and drops a big old Nazi bomb. <laughs> you can see the swastika <laughs> on it and everything. And then just before it fucking hits the house, Miss Peregrine just like stops everything and fucking makes it all go backwards. And then she just resets the entire day back to the night before. So now they can all go to bed and get up and do all the same shit again. <laughs> so Jake has to, you know, go back to the hotel to, you know, find his dad or whatever. He can't stay there forever because time continuous, it continues to pass in the outside world. So he goes back to the cave with Emma. She escorts him. And uh, during that time, we find out that Emma's like, uh, yeah, if I were to go back with you, if I spent more than a few minutes in your time, the time would catch up with me and I would become like fucking 70 years old, you know, like yeah. in like an hour. So I got to stay here. So then a weird bird comes in and flies into the cave and crashes into the wall and is hurt. And uh, they're like, oh shit, what's this? And he's like, oh, maybe it's the bird from the vision or whatever. And she's like, okay, okay I'll take it. I got to go. Now, Miss Peregrine is one of these peculiars that can create this loop, okay? These are called like Imbrines or something I don't know remember this movie is a version of a book mm -hmm. or a book series okay so there's like a whole mythology to it now these imbrines can also turn into birds which is how Miss Peregrine saw him on the ferry so it turns out that this bird is another imbrine from another loop elsewhere in the world so she takes it home to Miss Peregrine Jake finds his dad and his dad is like oh man been looking all over for you fucking what the fuck's going on and he's like yeah sorry i was hanging out with those guys we just had so much fun he was like okay you know what it's cool you're making weird friends you know it's all good uh so then uh they walk over and then there's this farmer and he's like hey all my sheep are dead you fucking did this right because uh you know i know everybody on the island except you so uh you know because the island is like 90 people live on it all right yeah. and they're like no we didn't have anything to do with that you know and all the sheep's eyes were gone I don't know why that would be, but whatever. They were all dead. So uh, also, the two kids that he said he was hanging out with are there. And they're like, we haven't seen him all fucking day. You paid us to hang out with him yesterday. Why would we do it for free? So the dad's like, oh, you fucking lied to me, asshole. All right, fuck you then. You're not going to go hang out at that fucking shitty burned out school. You're hanging out with me all fucking day until we leave. So Jake is like, shit. So the next day, they're on the beach. And then they find this other bird watcher, but he's like a professional. And he's got like a camp set up. He's played by Rupert Everett. <laughs> and uh, 
He's like, oh, jolly good, you know. Here to look at these birds, and it totally depresses Jake's dad because he's like, he's like, well, Jake's like, well, why don't you, uh, you know, uh, go go check out, do your research for your book, and he's like, man, if that guy is gonna publish this shit in some big glossy book, why should I even fucking care? I'm just gonna fucking have some beers and take a nap. So while he's sleeping, Jake sneaks out and he goes back to the children's home. Uh, no one will tell him what's going on with his grandpa. You know what his grandpa wanted him to know. Because he's like, get Miss Peregrine to tell you everything, man. Everything. Mm -hmm. Should have told you long ago. And she's like, no, we don't, I don't talk about unpleasant things unless it's totally necessary. And then uh, Enoch is like, yeah, you know, there is uh, there is some dark shit happening here. But uh, no one wants to tell you because they all want you to stay. And he's like, well, I know you don't want me to stay, so why don't you clue me in? And he's like, yeah, okay, let me introduce you to Victor, which is the other strong kid from the old old photos that his grandpa was showing him. Mm -hmm. And uh, he takes him upstairs, and Victor is laying in a bed. And uh, you see Enoch reach into his shirt, and he obviously puts something in there because Victor is fucking dead. And then Victor sits up because he's controlling his body now, and he makes his body, like, talk. And he's like, hey, I got no fucking eyes. <laughs> Why don't you tell me? Want me to tell you how I died? And then fucking uh, everybody's like, yeah, you're fucking around with him. Fuck you. So then Emma's like, hey, you know what? Why don't you come with me? I'm going to show you my, uh, show you something really cool. And uh, they go and they get in a little boat and then they row out into the ocean. And she, in her lead shoes, just jumps into the water. And he's like, oh, holy shit, she's going to fucking drown. And he, Jake fucking jumps in after her. And she's just fucking sinking, sinking, sinking. And she's blowing air out of her mouth the entire time, you know. And uh, he's swimming down as, as best he can and stuff. She blows out this giant bubble. And it goes, and it goes over his head, so now he can breathe. <laughs> okay, and uh, then we get a total fucking water world underwater sequence where <laughs> she's like taking him down to a shipwreck. Yeah. And uh, they're swimming inside of this wreck, and there's all these weird skeletons and shit in the ballroom and stuff. Kind of looks like the Titanic, but it says the HMS Augusta. And uh, she takes him into this one certain room, and then she like blows air out of her mouth and fills the room up with air, so now they can breathe. And she's like, welcome to my secret hideout. And he's like, what the fuck? How can you do this shit? I thought you could just fly. She's like, no, my peculiarity is all, it's it's air. Air will do anything that I want. So, you know, that's my shit. Anyway, before your grandpa retired, he asked me to keep this stuff for you. And she gives him this big file that is nothing but all of the bad peculiars. Okay? It's like Samuel L. Jackson. Uh. Okay? And uh, she's like, yeah, these motherfuckers. And they all got white eyes. Okay? Showing him all these pictures and shit. And she's like, yeah, these guys, they, they raid loops and they leave kids for dead and shit like that. And it's all fucked up. And that's what your grandpa was doing is he was hunting them down and fucking killing them, you know, for all of us good peculiars. Yeah. And so the kid is like, holy shit, my grandpa was fucking hunting monsters. <laughs> like, for real. So then she's like, yeah, you know, let me show you something else. And she's telling him, yeah, you know, most peculiars are, uh, or most loops are created from like a perfect day. But, uh, you know, Miss Peregrine, because of the bomb, she had to create this day in a rush. So uh, every day she has to do this. And uh, that creature that killed Victor, it comes up on shore every day here. So then they go out there and they look at it uh, at the, the edge of this cliff. And there's this big, you know, uh, chalk line of a, of a big giant body. And he's standing there and he's like, what the hell's going on? He sees Miss Peregrine and she's just standing there with a fucking crossbow. And she's just waiting. She's looking at her stopwatch. Wow. And uh, and then he sees that fucking monster. The same fucking type of monster that he saw behind Shelly in the beginning of the movie. Yeah. And he's like, oh, holy shit. And then Emma's like, no, 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 no. Be quiet. Don't break her concentration. She has to kill this fucker. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so uh, then she does. She kills it, shoots it in the head, and then it falls down and dies right in the middle of the chalk line. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, wow. That's fucked up shit. I mean, he was he was crazy looking. And then Emma's like, wait, you can see it? And he's like, yeah, what do you mean? She's like, nobody else can. That's your peculiarity. And he's like, no, no, I don't have one. You know, I'm just a normal kid. She's like, no, no, no. You couldn't be in the loop if you were a normal kid. So that's your whole thing. You can see these fucking monsters. That's cool, man. Like, you're just like your grandpa. Yeah. And he's like, oh, shit. That's cool. So then we learned that uh, that group of bad guys led by... Samuel L. Jackson, they decided that they didn't want to live like 
all the regular peculiars. They wanted to harness the power of those uh, imbries. Uh, so they captured one and they like electrified it and shit. And then they sent the signal through all these wires into helmets that they were wearing. And, uh, you know, so they could like take her powers by force mm-hmm. and they could just be immortals. <laughs> so they could reset their own days, I guess. And uh, it didn't work and it turned them all into those giant fucking monsters. And those monsters are called hollows. So then uh, Samuel L. Jackson turned into one, but he found out that when you eat the eyes of other peculiars, it helps you turn back into a human again. So that's his whole thing. That's why he's hunting everyone down. That's why they're raiding loops. Just looking for eyes. Yep. Killing all these kids and eating their eyes. Okay. And sheep. That Yeah, exactly. I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck with, with the sheep, okay? <laughs> So then Emma is like, I want you to stay with me. Stay, stay, stay. And he's like, no, man, I got to go back. You know, my dad and shit. And she's like, uh, all right, fuck you then. And he goes and he gets back to his time. And then they're walking down the road and uh, his dad is like, oh, man, I'm so glad I found you. When I heard they found a body, I was like, shit, it's probably Jake. And I fucked up. (laughs) And then they see that it's the old man in the wheelchair. And they all go down to the beach to, to look at his body. And he has no eyes. And it is left unclear who the fuck he was. Yeah. You know? Like, uh, in, in 2016, he was just an old man in a wheelchair in the bar. Okay. Okay? He wasn't at the school or anything like that, but he was obviously a peculiar. So while they're down on the beach, um, Jake, like, freaks out. And he's like, oh, shit. It's the bad guys. <laughs> it's Samuel L. Jackson. Uh, or that fucking monster, I gotta go warn everybody. So he runs away, and he starts running for the cave. And at that point, uh, his dad's trying to chase him down. Like, no, no, man, you can't run away from me again. You keep going missing. I I, I can't let you do that. And he gets winded. <laughs> and he can't chase him. And then Rupert Everett is like, oh, why don't I chase after him? Don't worry. <laughs> I'll get him for you, okay? You know. And he's like, what, you? Well, why? And he's like, don't worry, I run like 20 miles a day. <laughs> So he runs after him, and the kid runs into the cave, and he changes the time. And then he hears Rupert Everett go, hello? Hello? And he has wandered into the cave, so he's like, oh, shit. He looks at him, and he's like, wait, how the fuck are you even in here? You must be, you must be a peculiar. And then he's like, I am. Yeah, that's right. And I am so thankful that you led me here, man. Oh, yeah, shit. Because, uh. Yeah, you done fucked up now. And then he fucking turns into Samuel L. Jackson. Okay? And he's like, yeah, motherfucker. I've been looking for this shit for a long time. And I saw you at your grandpa's house in that car. Okay? Um, And damn it, I went there to find out the address of Miss Peregrine's loop. Okay? But before I could get it, that other stupid hollow showed up and took his eyes and killed him. So I'm pissed off about that. Anyway, we're here now, and it's all good. And his peculiarity is he can turn his hands into knives or axes and shit like that. He's like the fucking T-1000. Or okay. scissor hands? Yeah, I guess, yeah. <laughs> but he, it's usually just like one big knife. And uh, His power isn't to turn into Rupert Everett? He can also change his form, yeah. Okay. <laughs> just like the other lady. You know, Miss Peregrine can do the loops, and then she can also turn into a bird, you know? Right. Eh. Yeah, there's lots of, lots of leeway given in this movie is there any more rupert everett in the movie i don't think so that is a bad thing i know (laughs) (laughs) but then uh he's like yeah you know so because i couldn't get the address then i had to turn into your fucking therapist and then he morphs into her and and he's like yeah and i had to be your fucking therapist for fucking weeks or months or whatever just to get you to come to this fucking island so you could lead me here you fucking (laughs) stupid kid also, Samuel L. Jackson has, like, fucking wild gray hair, <laughs> okay? Yeah. Uh, and then all a uh, fucking mouth full of fangs. <laughs> Every tooth in his mouth is sharp. Jesus. And, like, his teeth are so big that he, like, kind of talks funny. <laughs> <laughs> all right, but uh, he's like, it's all good. Here we go. Now I'm going to take you hostage, and we're going to go to Miss Peregrine's house. So that's what they do. So then they show up and Miss Peregrine is like, oh, fuck. (laughs) All right. Now, here's the other thing. Let me tell you a little bit more about the kids. Remember, there was the kid that could grow things. And then there's this sweet little girl who wears like a ballerina tutu. 
And she is just so cute, dude. She's got all this curly hair. And then if you look at the back of her head, you like lift the hair up. There is this giant fucking mouth full of teeth on the back of her head. And like when she eats dinner, she has to feed that mouth. (laughs) Okay. Then there's these two little twins. They call them the twins. That's all they're called. And they are wearing these like weird fucking clown suits, but they go all the way over their heads. And then they have these weird little old timey clown markings on it and shit. Like they look like a couple of old fucking Harlequin type looking clowns. Back when clowns wore like cone hats and shit. Yeah. And they're like really fucking creepy looking. <laughs> All right. And, uh, you know, they're the, these little ones like that. They're the ones that are always just like running along with all of the older kids when they're trying to help them and shit. So he's like, yep, I'm taking, uh, you know, uh, fucking Samuel Jackson's like, I'm taking Miss Peregrine. I'm going to take her to my machine because now I'm going to kidnap a whole bunch of these inbreens. All right. And I'm going to do it all again. All right. I just need more of them. It's fine. <laughs> And I'm going to turn all the rest of my friends, all the other hollows, back into humans. Because he's got like four that he helped turn back into humans with white eyes. But the rest of everybody else of his group is all those hollow monsters. Okay. And he's like, oh, by the way, uh, there is a hollow that I'm traveling with. And he's going to be here very soon. So you are all going to die. (laughs) And they're like, oh, shit. And Miss Peregrine is like, yep, you know what? It's okay. I'm going to do what we're going to do what he wants so he doesn't hurt Jake. And I'm just going to go with him. He's going to make me turn into a bird and I'm going to be in a cage. Then he's going to leave. And you all are going to go into the TV room, okay? And she's like, wink, winking at him. Because in the TV room is the other Imbreen that has now healed from her injuries of crashing as a bird. And is now Judy Dench in the other room. And she's hiding behind the door. Samuel Jackson does not know she's in there. So she knows that at the very least, Judy Dench can create, can renew the loop. Right. Okay. But they still got to deal with this fucking hollow that's coming. So she looks at Jake, who is the only guy who can see the hollows. And he's, she's like, look, man, <laughs> they are all going to die unless you fucking do something. Because the whole movie long, he's like, I'm a coward. I don't know. I can't do anything. <laughs> and she's like, you better fucking do something, man. And he's like, yeah, okay, I'll do it. So now Judy Dench is in charge. Samuel Jackson leaves with the bird. And uh, they're all getting ready for the hollow. Little strong girl is like, you know, pushing couches up against the doors and everything, and they're battening down the hatches and getting ready, and they're all picking up, like, pitchforks and garden hose and shit like that. And then Judy Dench is like, now listen, here we go. Here's what's going to happen. I don't want any heroics. You know, you let me handle the hollow when it shows up, and then she just gets ripped out of the wall. Like, she gets ripped out of the house from the wall behind her because the hollow was on the other side and just, like, shoved his giant fucking arm through, stabbed her or whatever, and then threw took her away so she's just immediately gone or dead we never find out (laughs) (laughs) judy dench yeah so she's in like 30 seconds of the movie she's in like two or three minutes of the movie oh geez so now jake picks up the crossbow and he starts trying to shoot it it does not work because he's a shitty shot which comes up even more later and the monster picks up enoch and he's gonna eat his eyes and uh they end up Fucking, I don't know. Some he does shoot it, but he shoots it like in the shoulder, and mm-hmm. then everybody runs away from it. So they're all running through the house to get away from it. What's it look like? It looks like the fucking Slender Man. Where they the fuck all have look you been? Like that? Yeah. Okay. They all look like that. It actually turns out that it is also the very same one that ate the eyes of his grandfather. Okay. But they still all look the same. <laughs> all right. So they're running from it, and they got to go upstairs and get out on the roof and shit like that. Oh, where do we go? Now the little girl who can make things grow, she fucking makes a tree branch grow longer, and then they all get onto the branch, and then they they all get down to safety. And now, oh, look up. Oh, it's starting to rain, and now the bombers are flying over. Oh, okay, so now the fucking house is about to blow up. They don't have an embryo to reset the fucking day, so they got to get the fuck out of the house, okay? Or they're going to fucking die. Yeah. And so now it's just Jake and then that girl, Emma, and she, like, takes off her lead shoes and she fucking grabs onto him and then they float down away. And there's the monster on the roof of the fucking building when the bomb hits. So they killed it, but now they're fucked. Mm-hmm. So now they have to stay in 1943. And they can stay in 1943 and then, like, live the rest of their lives... But remember, they're fucking mutants, so everybody will want them dead or whatever. So they gotta, that's why the loops were even created. So they're like, okay, well, now we gotta go save Miss Peregrine. We gotta go to Blackpool and uh, go find that other loop that they're going to. 
we got to destroy his machine and then save her. And she's like, well, you know, we fucking, uh, we're never going to get there in time. And he's like, maybe if we go by boat. So then they all go down underwater. And then they, there's a big sequence of them raising the ship. Okay. okay. She fills it all with air and she raises it up. They fix it. And then all the kids are in the fucking bridge of the ship, like making it go. <laughs> like the little twins are there like steering the ship. And they can't even see over the fucking window. So Emma is talking with Jake and she's like, so check this out. Here's what I figured out. Uh, if we can lure, because Samuel Jackson has Miss Peregrine in a 2016 loop, okay, that was just created a few months earlier. If we go into that loop and then we can lure him out and back into here, into 1943, if you kill him here, your grandfather will never die. Right. And you won't lose him. And, she, and he's like, oh, shit, that's cool. All right, all right. So that's the plan. So they go to the end of this carnival boardwalk and uh they find the other loop and it's inside of like a little roller coaster haunted house they go in there and then they find samuel jackson and he's got a couple of his friends and then four hollows that are like standing guard and uh she's like uh emma's like hey motherfucker why don't you come outside and meet us down at the end of the pier and uh you know if you want all of our eyes you're gonna have to come and get him and he's like it's a trap fuck that let them go He's like, hey, Hollows, go check it out. Go kill all of them and eat their eyes. But no, I'm not going. Fuck you. Uh, I have to go and kill all of these birds and you know make everybody okay again. So now there's a little segment of all of the hollow monsters going out on the boardwalk. And remember, nobody can see them. So they can just like walk through regular people. Uh, they still like knock them over and stuff, but the people can't see them. Mm-hmm. So then the kids ambush them with snowballs. And they're throwing snowballs at all these fucking monsters. And then now you can see where they are because there's snow all over them. And then a bunch of other kids throw candy all over them. And then yet another kid blows cotton candy all over them. So now that you can totally see these fucking monsters. And all of the human public on the boardwalk is like freaking out and running. What year is it? They're in 2016. Okay. They're in the loop. They're outside of the loop at the moment. All right. So that kid Enoch, the Dr. Frankenstein guy... He uh, brings a bunch of uh, the skeletons in the haunted house to life and he sends them to go and fight the hollows. So it's like fucking Jason and the Argonauts or some shit, some old Ray Harryhausen fucking claymation fight. And uh, they're fucking fighting these monsters and shit and they kill a couple of them and then they send one over uh, on the water and shit like that and it, it supposedly goes down into the water and dies. So now Jake is like, okay, phase one is done. We got him, guys. Now we got to go get Samuel L. Jackson. So they go in there, and now they have to fight his four human friends. And one of their ha- one of them has the power of freezing shit. And another one is like half monkey person. It's weird. And the whole time Jake is shooting this fucking crossbow at Samuel L. Jackson and like never hits him. <laughs> and Samuel L. Jackson like talks about it a lot. He's like, man, you really need to just stop trying to shoot me, dude. Maybe you should give it to somebody else, you know, because you suck. And uh, uh, one of the, one kid, uh, I don't know, kids are all getting fucked with by the friends. Then the little girl who grows stuff, she throws seeds at him. And he's like, oh, that's your plan. And then she makes them all grow. And then they grab him and then they hold him down. And that guy, he uh, he had taken the fire girl. And he froze her. And she went to go try to touch him to set him on fire, but he's a freeze man, so it didn't work. Mm-hmm. So he, like, froze all the blood in her veins and shit and killed her. And then Enoch is like, oh, fuck, that that was my girlfriend. <laughs> and uh, there's the half monkey lady, and she's jumping around trying to kill all these little kids. And then we see those two creepy twins. And it's like, oh, all right. Finally going to see what the fuck's up with these kids. Because they're weird looking. Mm-hmm. And, uh, so then the monkey lady is like about to get them and then they just pull their hoods up and their faces are like weird fucking white snake faces with these giant fucking weird cat eyes. And then they just both at the same time just like screech at her and they look at her with their real faces and then she fucking turns to stone and then falls down and dies. Oh, okay. okay. So then, uh, oh, then they put their hoods down and they run along and everybody's running to go and get Samuel L. Jackson. And then that kid Enoch is like, he's holding the dead fire girl. And he's like, oh, God, you know, before 
oh, I, I just, he's like confessing his love to her or whatever. Yeah. And, uh, how old like, is, is they're all like 15, 16 years old, man. All it's right. weird. All right. Uh, so then he kisses her. But remember, he's got the power to bring shit to life. So then she wakes up and she's like, What were you saying? <laughs> and he's like, Oh shit, now I'm trapped. <laughs> uh, okay. So then Jake finds the Baron's machine. And he finds all these birds that are all these inbreens uh, that he has collected. And he frees them. And then he turns around and he faces Baron. And, uh, you know, he's like, Yeah, I should have killed you, such and such, blah, 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 cliche type shit. And, you know, here we go. Now we're going to fight. And then all of his friends come running in and Samuel L. Jackson turns around and hears that and he's like, oh shit, all right, check this out. Here's what I'm going to do. They come in, now there's two Jakes. And they're like, oh shit, which one do we kill? <laughs> and uh, both of the Jakes are just going, no, oh, kill him, kill him, no, no, no. Uh, you remember, I grew up in Florida and, uh, you know, whatever. <laughs> they're like, oh, then he's definitely Jake. Let's kill this one. And then... That Jake is like, oh, wait, no. And he turns around and he looks and he sees one of the hollows is still alive and it has gotten up out of the water and is now coming inside. And it sees these two Jakes and it walks up behind the one Jake and the other Jake is like, yeah, I'll prove to you that it's me because I, I can do something that no one else can. And then the other Jake is like, oh, yeah, what's that? And he's like, I can see the monsters. And he you know, jumps back out of the way and that hollow picks up the fake Jake. <laughs> and then he puts his tentacles out of his face. And then uh, he's like, all right. And he goes to stab him in the eyes with his tentacles, which is how they eat their eyes. The tentacles come out of their face. <laughs> <laughs> and then at the very last second, he turns in as Samuel L. Jackson and he's like, no, man, wait. <laughs> and then his eyes get sucked out. So then, uh, you know, Jake really didn't do anything. <laughs> It was all just a case of the right place at the right time. Yeah. So now the day is saved. But uh, this begs the question, uh, why didn't those twins just take care of all this shit from the beginning? <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? Right? <laughs> Fucking stupid ass shit. They could just stare at the Nazis. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Doesn't matter. You got a problem? Bring the twins. <laughs> Why, why Why? wasn't the whole day spent with those kids trying to get an anti-aircraft fucking gun or something? <laughs> I fucking know, man. Is that it? No, nah, we got some epilogue going on. So now the kids, uh, they can go back to 1943, but remember now their loop is destroyed. Now they did save Miss Peregrine. She, uh, he's like, yeah, you can't stay here in 2016 because now you'll die. So they have to go back to 1943. They go back to 1943 and they just decide to all live on the ship. Okay, if they can live on the ship, then they can stay away from people and then live their lives and grow up. Uh -huh. And Miss Peregrine, she's standing there watching. She's like flying around as a bird. So she's like keeping an eye on them, you know, but they have chosen life instead of being frozen in time. Yeah. Anyway, Jake goes home to his grandpa's house, who is alive. And he's like, yeah, hey, man. And then he tells his grandpa his whole story. And his grandpa is like, yeah, see, I told you I wasn't crazy, man. Uh, anyway, I got a present for you. And he gives him the book that he got in the at the beginning of the movie. And he's like, oh, yeah, no, Grandpa, it's cool. I already saw that. And he opens it up, and it's full of all of this different country and different time period money. Mm -hmm. And uh, he looks at his grandpa. His grandpa's like, yeah, for your travels. And he's like, what do you mean? And he's like, go find her. Go find Emma. Don't make the mistake that I did. Because that was his mistake, like... When he was a kid, him and Emma were in love. Yeah. <laughs> but he, like, chose to leave and go hunt all those monsters. So, anyway, he's like, yeah, okay. And then he leaves. And he shows up on the boat. And Emma's like, oh, my God, it's you. And he's got, like, long hair now. <laughs> and he's like, you have no idea what it has taken to find you. You know? Uh, She's still young? Yeah. He had to go back to 1943. Oh. And he had to do this by going through other loops. Oh, okay. That were around the world. All right. Okay. And at one, he's like, yeah, at first I had to go through the one in uh, California. And it shows him going to like a gas station fucking bathroom. He's like, then that took me to Tokyo. So then, and he goes into like a fucking photo booth. He's like, then I was in the 60s or whatever, blah, blah, blah. And I was in the Navy for two months. <laughs> 
for two years. I don't know. And then he's like, finally, I found this. And she's like, no, no, it's fine. You're here now. So then he's just like going to fucking stay with her. And uh, yeah. In the 40s. <laughs> In the 40s. On the weird old still rusted out and barnacle encrusted ship yeah that they are traveling around the seas with and that's right. it man yep all right he decided to drink the Kool-Aid cool so there you go a Tim Burton movie with no Johnny Depp that's a plus well is it I know it is yeah I'm not all that happy with this movie <laughs> <laughs> and I was thinking when this movie started, I was like, man, Johnny Depp better not show up in this fucking movie. <laughs> okay. Because, like, he's in every Tim Burton movie, okay? Now, Johnny Depp fans, they're like, those movies are the best movies ever. Yeah. Okay? You know, like, oh, I loved Alice in Wonderland, which was not a good movie, dude. Yeah. You know? Uh, all he has to do is, like, put some makeup on his face and act a little, act a little crazy. <laughs> And everybody's like, he is the greatest actor of our time. Okay, now you got a, you got Johnny Depp fans that watch his version of the the Willy Wonka shit, and they're like, that movie was incredible. Yeah. And you're like, well, you know, what'd you think of the old one with Gene Wilder? And they're like, what old one? Yeah. You know. So they're gonna redo Beetlejuice, okay, with Johnny Depp, and people are gonna be like, are they really redoing it? I'm pretty sure. I yeah. They were making a sequel. No, I think they're they are making a sequel. That's neither here nor there. It's a Beetlejuice movie where Michael Keaton is not playing him. Really? It's gonna be fucking Johnny Depp. Ah, oh, good lord! And everybody's gonna be like, "Who's Michael Keaton?" <laughs> Johnny Depp is. He's wonderful. Have you seen Beetlejuice? <laughs> okay, uh, but here's the thing: is those those Johnny Depp Tim Burton movies they always do so well because of Johnny Depp. Yeah. So I was like. Wow, I wonder how a Tim Burton movie without him is going to do. And I am not impressed. <laughs> so I don't know what to say. It's like a double-edged sword. Yeah. He probably could have played Samuel Jackson's he thing. He could have, yeah. It would have been very easy to just throw him in here somewhere. People but are they... pissed off at this movie. Really? Why? Because Samuel Jackson is the only black guy and he's the bad guy. Yeah. 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 They are right about this that. He's very white. And uh Oh yeah. Tim Burton. This all happened today. Uh Tim Burton came out and he said, "I grew up with black exploitation movies and at no point did I say these movies need more white people." Oh wow. <laughs> yeah. Uh -oh. And like no one knows what to do. Wow. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, I don't know what to do either. <laughs> So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children on Movies with Ron. All right. Good job, man. Thank you. How about Eva Green? Penny Dreadful? I'm fucking in love with her. Yeah, man. Yeah. I fucking... Uh, I didn't really care for her much uh, before I got into Penny Dreadful, and I fucking loved that show until, yeah. of course, the third season when it all, like... Went tits up. Yeah. Did you watch the third season? <laughs> yeah. I haven't quite finished it, but I remember you telling me that they realized they weren't going to renew the show, so they had to like wrap everything up super like too fast. Don't watch the last two episodes. Oh, Just man. Just leave really? it. Just leave it. And like let it remain in its glory. <laughs> okay. <Yeah. laughs> Shit, that sucks. <laughs> She's fucking great, man. I love her. If I ever met her, I'd be like, Remember when you were in Penny Dreadful? <laughs> <laughs> Be that Chris Farley guy from Saturday Night Live. Yeah. Remember when you were in Sin City and we saw your titch? <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to see them now? <laughs> <laughs> and that weird voice she has. In, in <laughs> fucking, she has a raspy voice. Yeah, in Penny Dreadful. Is that the only Would place like, she uses that? Would you like to see my tits? <laughs> now, she did it a little bit in this one, too. No, no, we respect her. I love Eva Green. Yeah. Yeah, we actually do respect her. Maybe we should cut that out. Like, we took this actress that we, like, love and actually respect. We fucking made it about her tits. <laughs> All of this is staying in. <laughs> it reminded me of X-Men crossed with Nightbreed. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> it's like fucking X-Men crossed with Harry Potter. I don't fucking know. It's weird, man. I did a little reading and I found out that this movie is uh, only the basic premise is the same. Like all of the characters were different. All of their powers were different in the fucking novels. Uh, yeah. They just like totally changed it all up. Uh, I don't know. For whatever that's worth. Yeah, I got the feeling it was a whole universe. Yeah, me too. I kept questioning uh, the logic. But when I, I like, really gathered that was at the end of the movie. Okay. And there was a fucking theater clap for right. this fucking movie. Really? Yeah. I was like, what the fuck? I fucking yeah. looked at Heather and I was like, why? Yeah, fuck that shit. She was like, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> you know, she was like, it, it wasn't that bad. You know, it was it was, it was was a cute movie. <laughs> you know, and she's right. It, it, it wasn't bad, but eh, I don't know, man. All right, guys. Thanks for listening. All right. Love you. Movies with Ron. I got pulled over by a cop once. So I went out and bought cigarettes and strawberry milk. The strawberry milk Saved was an you. impulse buy. So I got pulled over by a cop and it was a training night. Yeah. So they were pulling everybody over. And the trainee came up. He's like, hey, sir, I have this flashlight. You got some strawberry milk there? <laughs> I felt so emasculated. <laughs> hey, it could have been worse, man. They let me off with a warning. Yeah. That reminds me of when I got pulled over for, I, I kind of accelerated through a yellow light once. And uh, I, might, I don't know, maybe it was a training night. But uh yeah, I got pulled over. And the cops were like real super aggressive. What? The, where the hell are you? It was like two or three in the morning. <laughs> I had this girl with me and she had wanted to go out for uh, cookies and milk, oddly enough. Okay. Uh-huh. So we went to Walmart and I was just trying to get back home. You know what I mean? And uh, uh, so, yeah, went a little fast. <laughs> they pulled me over. They were like, where the hell are you coming from? <laughs> they pulled me out of the car and everything. And I was like, Walmart. <laughs> well, were you getting at Walmart this late at night? And I was like. Cookies and milk. <laughs> and the cop's like, what the hell? And then he looks over and he sees this little blonde in the car and he's like, he looks back at me and he's like, all right, get out of here, man. Take it this was not your idea. No, sir.